There are over 1,500 talks on TED.com, and there are over 25,000 TEDx onla talks online. And, you know, people can watch these at home, in their pajamas, at their leisure, whenever they feel like it. So you kind of got to wonder, why would anyone come to any of our events? I think that the answer to that is experience. I think the experience we provide is really important. You know, people connecting around the power of ideas. And so what this says to me and to all of us is that we really need to put as much time and effort into thinking about what that experience is as we do into curating the speaker program. For me, it's always been a, a key piece of TED experience planning, but it really hit home when, in 2008, we decided to do what ultimately became TED Active. It was a simulcast event that we had in Aspen. And so, you know, we, we really had to look at it and think, what do you do so that, like, we're not just, it was 300 people at that time, what do we do so that we're not 300 people sitting in a room watching television together? And these are people who paid a few thousand bucks to be there, by the way, right? Um, so we, we really thought about, you know, putting some great exhibits in and thinking about ways that people can sort of, you know, can connect at the event. Well, the plan was great, and then we got there, and we had a little near disaster. Someone on the AV team hung a projector really close to a sprinkler head, and the fire alarm went off. And what you're looking at here is our disaster. You know, it's raining down on all of our equipment. This is less than 48 hours before the event started. You see our couches and our plush chairs and blankets and our equipment and all of our electrical stuff. That's all there. It's all getting rained on. And so, you know, it was, it was, it was amazing. So also, <laughs> we had some kind of, didn't really think the whole thing through quite well enough. We had three staffers, three TED staffers at TED Active in 2008 for 300 attendees. So attendees were showing up. The registration was like right outside of where you're seeing all this water. They were showing up to register, and it was super loud. The fire alarm was going off. And, um, and they were like, OK, how can we help? And we said, you know what? Can you run to the gym and grab all the towels you can find? Can you get some hair dryers? Can you take, pick up this mop and help us? And it kind of set the tone for the week. And what we found then was that all the people that had helped out and that had pitched, us, pitched in kind of wanted to do that the rest of the week. And then that inspired others to pitch in. And then the truly amazing thing was that everyone who did pitch in had a fantastic time. They loved it. We got help. It was amazing. And it created this incredible sense of community. And that's when I realized, you know, that community was the most important asset that we have. And we all have that asset, every person in here. And it's free, and it's, it's I think, really fun to think about all the things we can do with that. And we learn so much from you all and all the things that you do with your communities. It's, 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 really, it's really cool, and I think that's something, you know, every time we have a TED event, we really, really think about where can we connect with people and how can we connect people with each other. And that's from, you know, the, the, email that, the emails that go out after you register. This is an email we send, emails leading up to TED Active, you know, every week. This is one where we introduced everybody to the people who are like the hosts at the event. You'll see people at, here at TED Global with a little tag on their name badge and they're, they're here to sort of help people first timers find their way around. It's fun to get them connecting online. There's the TED Global 2013 Facebook group. We do that at TED Active too. And um, so later on in this newsletter that you see here, but it's not pictured, we talked about some of the stuff people were talking about online and um, helps get people engaged. And then down to how you walk out of the events. This is Jesse Arrington at TED Active a couple years ago. The whole thing was over. We were walking out to our party, and she brought rainbow-colored hats, and everybody wore solid-colored shirts, and we walked out after a marching band in rainbow colors to our farewell party. We also like to put together places where people can make stuff. It helps introverts connect really well, actually, because some, for some people, it's really hard to walk up and introduce yourself, but they still want to be talking to people, so a great way to engage them is to allow people to sit down and make stuff and feel creative and be creative, and then that has this incredible benefit, too, of giving you fantastic artwork for your event that's been created by the community that everyone feels really proud of, too. So that's the sculpture that these people were contributing to that was at TED Active this year. The artist is Grace Hawthorne. And then we also had this artist, Kyle Johnson, who brought materials to make flags. And everybody could make a flag that sort of represented their personality. So if you look at it, it created this beautiful sort of landscape of artwork representing all the people at TED Active out there. And it, you know, it looks great as a whole. But what's really awesome is that you go up to each one of those very different flags, and that represents a different personality of someone who's there, which is, was really fun. But you, know, you guys are doing these things, too. And TEDx Manhattan 
did something I think is great. You don't have as long to kind of get people to connect. They had a family-style lunch. People are passing dishes. It feels like, how can that not be intimate, right? How can you not get to know the people you're sitting next to? TEDx Singapore had do-it-yourself name badges. People made name badges that, you know, not only said words that represented them, but visually represented them as well, which I thought was pretty cool. There's another asset that we all have, all of us, that I think also contributes to experience, and that's space, event space. It's stage design. It is like the flow of a room. Thinking about all of these elements really add to the experience. Thinking about the ideas that are inspired by the space that you choose. Um, TEDx Ubud, Look at that. I mean, it's a bamboo pavilion. Then they've got bamboo mats out there. I mean, I'm dying to like crawl into that picture and sit on one. <laughs> um, and they have flowers that for their TEDx logo. TEDx Amidalen uh, in Sweden. What I love about what they did is it's a really simple setup, right? But the idea behind this, it's at midnight. They have their TEDx at midnight outside. You don't need much. <laughs> TEDx Lasador. They decided to use their environment to put their speakers, I mean, their attendees in a cage. <laughs> Not sure what's going on with that one, but actually it was on a farm and they let them roam free. <laughs> a beautiful farm though that, that you know, and created a good experience for everyone who was there and, and I'm sure really informed the event too. Um, at TEDx Rio Plus 20, they built a venue. And the spectacular thing about that, too, is that every piece of that, look at that, the size of that, right? And every piece of that was reusable later when it was taken down. Stage design is also important. It's something that we really care about, and we love to see what you all come up with because, you know, it also it impacts the videos that we see in the end. So it's really important to think about it. TEDx Edmonton is known around the office for their fantastic stage design. We, we love different stages that they've turned out. I think this one from TEDx Mid-Atlantic and Nate um, is, is really wonderful. It's, it's so simple and it's, you know, bookshelves with special books on the stage. That's something that, you know, is easily achievable but really well thought out too. Um, I think this one from TEDx Cairo is really nice and just shows the power of lighting. You know, that li it's lighting to create ambiance. And then there's a third thing that I think we all have in common with what we do, and that is like this massive passion, the love. And, and what this allows us to contribute to each event is the kind of ideas that don't relate to anything else, but just wouldn't it be cool if? And so TEDx Sauna said, wouldn't it be cool if we could put our logo on a mountainside and you could see it from Google Earth? Yeah, that's Google Earth. TEDx Sauna, right? In Yemen. Um, TEDx Kids at Chiyoda in Tokyo decided to do an audition event for kids. Fantastic. Then a lot of you guys know about the Cupcake Love website on the page on Facebook with people who just make TEDx cupcakes. And what I think is amazing is how many of you all have contributed cupcakes to that. Who has in here? Right? I mean, that's pretty great. And then in TEDx Detroit, the, every year they gather their attendees outside and make a big X and take a photo of the attendees, which I think is fun. So I'm going to kind of end this with another disaster story, because <laughs> I love those and I've had a few of them, and I know a lot of you have had a few of them too. Um, but this is one where all of those three components ended up coming together to not only sort of save the day, but actually provide an incredible experience for people who were there. Last year we did um, a series of talent search events. We did one in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we had this horrible thing happen, which there was like a weird power problem. And we lost power a few times for a cumulative three hours. <laughs> so um, I was co-hosting it with Rodrigo Cunha, and we had to kind of fill the time because we had all these speakers who had worked so hard on their talks and we really owed it to them to keep the audience there. We had no idea actually how long it was going to take, but we knew we had to go to plan Z. I mean, we, knew we had to really do something, right? So we started trying to get people up on stage and it was not easy. I mean, we, we looked at, we, well, well, first actually the, the space thing really helped this out because the way that they had planned their space was that there was a main theater 
and then also a simulcast area. So we did lose some people over time. The, the event was due to end at 9 p.m., and it ended up ending at, ending at midnight, so it was quite late. And we lost a few people, but you could not feel it in the room at all. Every single seat in the theater stayed packed until the end because of that simulcast area. Everyone was able to stay in there and watch live, and that really, really made a difference. The other thing, you know, we just looked around, and we're, we said, okay, what do we have? We don't have power. It's late at night. We have nothing. We've got iPhones with flashlights on them. We've got a bunch of people. So we, we started getting them up and trying to get stories out of them. We sort of figured out like how to do that and, and had people come up and do stuff. And then, and it was, it, was, it was a little hard. And then people started to come up and like sing and do talents and, and stuff. And what you see here is these three women getting on stage, leading us all in a song. And the only reason you're seeing it lit at all is because of the camera's flash. But there are two of us holding iPhone flashlights up on them. And it turned into this totally magical thing. And one of our speakers actually gave a marriage proposal from the stage at the end. <laughs> it was pretty incredible. And it was also the passion of the team there that helped everyone go, like for a second, everyone was like, everyone thought, oh, what are we going to do? This is horrible. But then because everyone loved what they were doing so much, they pretty quickly went to, OK, what's the opportunity here? How do we make this great? Um, so. I guess I just want to end this with all of this makes me really think. We should all, we all need to look at our events, every single logistical piece, everything we ever do and, and, and arrange, every piece of it, emails, all of it, and think, what is the experience here? Why not make it extraordinary? Thank you. Thank you.